All right, this is my engine build up. This is of a Ford 300 straight six. It's May 4th, 2014. This video is more from my own personal diary, but if you get some information out of it, more power to you. So, this engine head manifolds is going to go in this 67 Ford High Boy in good shape. So, had a stock engine a couple months ago, so I'm hoping to get some more power and torque out of this setup. So, I guess I'll start with the carburetor, work my way down. It's an Auto Light two barrel 2100, pretty common carburetor you find on a lot of Fords. The reason I chose this carburetor is it's not super huge or overkill. I want to develop mostly torque out of this engine, so these carbs had great throttle response at idle. They're very simple in how they're designed, and I like simplicity. Uh, pretty efficient, it has annular discharge if you're familiar with that kind of a different different Venturi setup and the way the fuels discharge into there so uh, makes them pretty efficient you can also stand them on end and they run pretty good good to know if you're rock crawling or going up a steep hill very steep hill so that's my car bears rebuilt I had to make a two barrel adapter plate as you can see right here for the four barrel manifold it's a Clifford four barrel manifold uh, Clifford or Offenhauser make these, but this happened to be on Craigslist. Got a good deal out of it. So, um, gas there, carb, that manifold. Oh, underneath the manifold, I built a heat exchanger plate, as you see right there. Coolant goes in, heats the manifold, comes back out. Better fuel atomization. The challenge of this, as you can see, is that there's only a quarter inch between the intake and exhaust manifold. And so I had to build a plate out of eighth inch steel and then bevel the mounting the mounting bolts inside of that steel and get it to bolt on all in an eighth of an inch. And I had to do the same thing with the exhaust manifold and uh, all the while try to maintain a little bit of airflow between the two to cool them got about a sixteenth of an inch not too much so then I plumb my own or welded my own plumbing in for the uh, for the heat in and out I got a little spacer right here underneath the two barrel just if in case I want to plumb heating into it later in case it gets real cold carb icing but we don't really have that problem here uh, carburetor intake next is the head <coughs> This is not your Ford 300 head, it's actually a 240 cubic inch head. Ford 300 and 240 cubic inch motors are essentially the same. So you can bolt them uh, right on. The advantage of using a 240 head is... Uh, the combustion chamber right here is a little different than the 300 head. It's actually smaller, so by I think about 50 cc's or something. So you can actually bump your compression ratio up about half a point so instead of 8.9 to 1 compression I'll think I'll be doing about a 9.4 to 1 so the way you ID a 240 head is their kidney shaped combustion chamber the Ford 300 heads had more of a D shaped D is in dog and I think uh, some of the later models had a heart shaped combustion chamber so I think you can ID a 240 head with uh, the casing numbers right there if you can see them if, if the heads on the block it's kind of hard to see because top of the block it's underneath the underneath the uh, thermostat right there you'd have to get a mirror so I'm not sure if those numbers will tell you. I think those numbers would tell you if it's a 240 inch so so yeah you get better compression and uh, a closed combustion chamber for a better burn and so I had a guy Rebuild this in town, did a pretty good job. He did a three angle uh, valve seat job on it with a two angle valve job on it, so just to get better airflow. I also ported the head before I took it to him and did a port match of the runners and blended the bowls real well, tried to open it up as best I could. The idea is not to get mass airflow, but just to get efficient, smooth airflow, trying to build torque out of this engine. So hopefully, I'll get more power out of mid and upper range RPM. 
The exhaust manifold is not your regular manifold. It's actually off of a late 60s, early 70s Ford. They made them for dump trucks, one ton trucks, kind of heavier duty operations. They're kind of rare. But the advantage of these is it has a two and a half inch dump right here, two and a half inch exhaust. And uh, the regular common manifold came off at about a 45 and it was a two inch. So you do the square, the area in square inches, you get quite a bit more flow out of this uh, two and a half inch pipe here. So uh, some say they actually flow better than headers. I'm not sure. Once again, I had to build a plate for the exhaust manifold. And uh, you also don't have a flapper heat riser valve to get in the way of flow like you do the regular manifolds. So, so that's about it. I'm excited to get this in. I think it'll be a pretty big improvement over stock. Uh, these heads really kind of had a, they, they weren't built very well as far as airflow. So I think porting these heads really helps. It doesn't seem to me to do much good to put a big carburetor intake and exhaust on without porting the heads. So I think if you can port the head, like I did, as my first port job, my mechanic said I did a pretty good job at it, my engine builder. So you can get a lot more airflow in and out for more power. So bottom end of this engine is pretty good shape. The engine is actually out of a 65, uh, original as far as I can tell has good compression, good old pressure, so I'm just going to leave it for now. So, so yeah, that's my engine build, and uh, hopefully with if everything goes good, I'll actually have it in, maybe even running this evening. So, Then, woodcutting season. We'll see how it does hauling some firewood. <laughs>